Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Hope you're all doing well. In this video, I would like to show you how to make a chainsaw chain without any of the special tools. And by special tools, I mean the chain brake and the rivet spinner. I'm gonna show you how I make chainsaw chain without those tools because I don't own any of those tools. So I'm going to show you how to make a chainsaw chain with a ball peen hammer, a chunk of steel, and a bench grinder. So let's get into it. Okay, so I've got you guys set up in a place where I'm not going to be in the way, so you can actually see what I'm doing. I already made this video <laughs> once so far, and realized that I was in the way. So let's just say the scenario is that you have decided that you can make chains cheaper than buying them. And maybe you've bought yourself a 100 foot roll or even a 25 or 50 foot roll. You can, even, I think you can even get them 75 feet. But now you need to know how to make the chain. And you don't want to buy any of the special tools that you need to in order to break the chain down and to re-rivet the master links on because you've just made a large investment in a roll of chain. <clears throat> and maybe you've run out of money. So you need to go out and you need to cut more and you need to make more money that way in order to then buy those tools. But maybe you'll decide that this is a much easier way and I think it is because I do it all the time. <laughs> and uh, I actually kind of prefer this method more. Probably because it's cheaper. But <clears throat> first thing you've got to do is take your chainsaw chain and divvy it up to where you've got two drivers paired up with each other on either end. Sometimes you'll have where there's two drivers on one side and three on the other that are grouped together. And that just means that you've got an odd number of drivers. So you've got like say 97 or 99 drivers instead of 98. I know this is a 98 driver chain because I've got two drivers paired up on either side. And then I've counted that top row, which was 49. And I multiplied that by two and I got 98 out of it. <clears throat> now the chain I'm using, this is a full comp 50 gauge three eighths. It's a lot of teeth to file, especially on like a 30 inch bar. I think actually, I can't remember if it's a 28 or 30 inch bar. It's, a, it's an original home light bar. And it was originally 58 or 50 gauge, but over the years it's gotten worn out. And so I went ahead and I just re-gauged the channel to 58 because this thing walked quite a bit. And so I happen to have a roll, I've got several rolls. I've got 50 and 58 and I've got tooth and I got full comp and I've got square ground and chisel got all the got most of the chains matter of fact over here I've got some three quarter inch harvester chain and some 404 uh, 71 harvester chain actually here's a box of 404 80 69 drivers so that's an odd number of drivers there so that would if you held that loop you'd find there's three on one side and two on the other so what I do to make it easier instead of driving nails into my bench, which I know there's guys that do that, and that works for them. But I'm constantly moving things around my bench, and I don't want nails getting caught on things and getting bent. So what I do is I take my chain off the roll quite a bit, and then I match up the drivers. All right, I'll hold this in, pull it straight. There you go. Now I've got my drivers matched up all along this chain and then I'll take my sharpie and I'll mark the center link all right that is my center link so now I no longer need this chain all right throw that off the side hold that side and I can bring this chain around of course it decides it wants to tangle up Typical chain behavior. Probably the most irritating thing about chainsaw chains is it's nothing to deal with that. Especially when you take them out of your bag or something, like maybe, maybe like a saw bag. Or you take it out of the box and it's all tangled up. It still happens even with holes. When you pull it out like I just did. <clears throat> okay, so. I'm going to pull this around. And I'm going 
going to even this up. So you see these top two rows, all right? So now, if we're looking at it, we can see, I need to move this down a little further so you can see better. You can see that there is a tooth here, all right? That needs to come out. I've already gone through and counted this. And I already know that there are 16 teeth on one side and 16 teeth on the other. So that's an even number of teeth for this chain, which is perfect because I'm gonna use this chain for milling and bucking large rounds. So I don't want it to walk. So this tooth needs to come out anyway in order to make it even, all right? And if you want, you can then go and count this row and make sure that you have an even number of teeth on either side. Make sure that you still have 98 drivers, but this is the way that I've done it. I've, I think I'm gonna screw it up a few times. So just go ahead and double check yourself. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make sure that I do in fact have 16 teeth. I'm gonna make sure I didn't miscount something. I'll train you around and we'll use a bench grinder to take this tooth off. Okay, so I've got you guys set up now. I've got a glove for safety and I'm going to then find there you go there's my links that are that are sharpied black and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here at an angle and catch the very side of this grinding wheel I'm going to grind that rivet off all right I'm going to go ahead I'm going to flip this grinder on it's going to sound absolutely horrible but it's been like that for probably the last 20 years so it'll be perfectly fine I think just uh don't mind listening to any of that Maybe you can see. Okay, see how see how I got that rivet ground down flush? That means now there's nothing holding that master link together. So I've got to go ahead and do the second rivet. And then I'll go ahead and pop this off. Okay, so now we've got the rivets ground down on our link. And what we can do now is you can either come from this side and try and get a screwdriver in there and pry it open. You can get in between here, and kind of pry a little bit, or you can go from the top side, which is the easiest way to do it, because it's a little more open. So you just kind of try and get your screwdriver down in there, try and kind of pry in between. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. All right. Of course, now that I've got the camera on, I'm gonna be fumbling around. All right. Go ahead and get this situated. And it will eventually pop apart. There it goes. All right, see? See how this has popped up? It's popped off. Come in here. And we now have taken our link apart. See, there's the two parts there. So now we have our full loop. It's broken off with our two ends from the main loop on the roll. And now what we have to do is get the master links out. And usually these boxes come with several bags of master links in a bag like this. So what I've got to do is I've got to untangle it again. And like I said, you want to make sure you don't have this tangled up at all. I have done this once before where 
I've had the chain inside out. I've had a, a loop <laughs> in the chain and they're never gonna get it out. It, it becomes a little irritating, especially if it's your first time making a chain and then you end up screwing up a little bit like that. But we're all human beings. We're not perfect. Okay. So I gotta get that situated. So I'll take my screwdriver and I'll tear the bag open. And what we need is we need a blank side and we need a rivet side. All right. And so what we gotta do then is try and get this to line up and make sure that these, by the way, are a little directional. You gotta make sure that that notch is down, okay? That would then match the rest of the chain. And then what we gotta start doing is... Okay, so I had to go ahead and take that link back off. I uh, hadn't even had it seated yet. It wasn't pinching the chain or anything, but what was happening was there was a clearance issue between the master link and the driver. So what I have to do, and you may have to run into this sometimes, is you gotta go through and just kind of clean a burr off. That's all that was in there was just a small burr that probably happened from me prying on it. So you just gotta go ahead and kind of clean that burr off a little bit. It doesn't take much. I just want to go ahead and throw the link together temporarily and see the link moves freely. All right, that's what we want to check. I'll go ahead and make sure I don't have any loops in my chain, like I said before. And go ahead and do that. Double check one more time. Everything is moving freely. All right, <clears throat> so now we've got that all squared away. We've got to hold the chain. Get this all square. Again, fumbling around. All right, then we just take the ball in and I apologize if the camera shakes. All right. This can be kind of tricky. This is where the spinner comes in handy, but like I said, you don't need to have one. This is kind of the old school way of putting chains together. But it's kind of finicky, so it will try your patience. Okay, so apparently I didn't hit record when I started this over. I had to go ahead and just grind down my rivets and start another master link. But you can see that I've already got these rivets started. And you gotta kinda hold it with your fingernail and, and kinda tap it a little bit at the same time to get those to start mushrooming over. All right. I apologize if the camera is shaking, but this is the basic, the basic of it. And so you just got to kind of look and make sure you're not pinching, make sure it moves freely. As you can see, it's starting to actually form over a rivet. Just got to hold the chain in such a way. Now you can also use the ball peen in. Kind of work your way around. Just double 
check. It's not binding. But as you can see, it is starting to form a rivet. And when I'm done, it will be the same size as the rest of these rivets. They're very close to the same size. So that way it has full engagement. So I'll go ahead and turn you guys off so I stop shaking the camera. And I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've pounded the rivets down. And I don't know if you can tell, but now all the rivets are the same size. This is the master link that I put in. And you can see I, I kind of did touch this rivet a little bit with the hammer and this one here. That will happen. It's not a big deal. It's not going to hurt anything. You just got to make sure you're not going to pinch the chain. So you can see these master links. They move freely here. They move freely here. It's, you just got to make sure that the links move independently. You don't want to. You don't want to have a pinched chain. Okay. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I just wanted to go ahead and share that and show that you don't technically need all the special tools. You can make a chain with just basic hand tools and break it down. You can use a hand grinder to do this. You don't you don't need to have a bench grinder. If you've got nothing but file, you could technically take the time and slowly file these rivets down until you can pop them apart. I mean, you any way to remove metal, all right? But I just use the bench grinder because it sits here in my shop. I use it quite often to do these chains. And I sometimes even use a body dolly, but I figured that would make too much of a ringing sound. But I'm hammering on it, and I didn't do that on camera. So it probably would have also helped if I used my regular chain hammer. I, this is, I think, a machinist hammer, but I go ahead and I use it when I make chains. Because then you can come over here and... Let me get this squared up. And you can you can tap on it without the risk of hitting the other rivet, especially with especially with this end here. But I did this whole chain with the ball peen just so I can show that you can do it. It is a little cumbersome, that's why I didn't touch the other rivets. It's not going to hurt anything. You just got to make sure it doesn't pinch them. So, there you go. I made a chain without any special tools. I don't have a chain break. I don't have a, 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 a rivet spinner. Literally, literally just common hand tools. So, you guys can go ahead and try it yourself if you feel comfortable enough. Um, or maybe in the future you might decide that you want to try this and now you know how. It's not very difficult. It's not, it's not rocket, si rocket science. So, like I said, if you want to try and test your skills a little bit, this is a good way to do it. And in the end, you can make chains for a lot cheaper than buying them in a pre-made loop. So, like I said, that's all I have for you guys today. I will see you next time, and have a great day.